Hey, Susan, God bless you. God bless you, Susan. God bless you. I declare it is well with you and your house. May God bless you and your house. Uh, Panky, Panky from India. Pastor Panky, God bless you and your house. God bless you. Please um, invite your loved ones and um, share the broadcast. We are just behind um, schedule. Uh, due to some technical issue here, but um, so we're only going to be on the Facebook by itself. Uh, sorry for those of you who cannot see us on the other platforms um, because of some technical stuff. So please invite your friends and lead them all here to Facebook, all right? Just Facebook today because of some technical issue here with other um other uh, platforms okay so we'll do that all right petrina god bless you god bless you all right all eyes lead to facebook today all right other platforms are shut down for some technical reasons so please um invite your friends tell all of them to be on facebook right here okay do that and um that that should um that should work all right we're still on here live but only on facebook and so please invite your friends and tell them that we're on facebook just on facebook for today all right god bless you god bless you petrina god bless you pastor penke god bless you susan i trust that you guys are still there and um i declare that it is well with you and your house it is well with you and your house god bless all of you god bless you please share the broadcast to your friends and loved ones as well god bless you we're going to be um getting to the word of god today get yourselves your bibles and um, your notepads and pens and pencils get them ready to take down some notes for yourself for your increase and your knowledge about the word of god and um see yourself living it practically to see the manifestation of the power of god which is in you and so um make sure that um you take every notes down take good notes things you know write it the way you rem you know you remember okay and um, put it to work write it the way you remember and put it to work God bless you, Petrina. God bless you. Invite your friends and loved ones. Share this broadcast to all the people out there and be a blessing to them as well. All right. Tell others in case they're trying to look, you know, for for me on uh, the other platforms like the YouTube and the Twitter and all that. We are not there today due to some technical issue here so um we're not there today we are only broadcasting from the facebook only the facebook today all right 
God bless you for that. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are thanking you for this day, for such a wonderful day you've blessed us with. We are so, so grateful. We are thankful. Many, many, many thanks to you. Many thanks. Many, many, many thanks. We are so, so grateful. We don't take it for granted for what you have done and still doing in our lives. Now, Lord, I pray that this broadcast today will be a blessing to your people, even as we share in this few minutes concerning divine healing and authority and the power you have given to us, your followers, Jesus. You've given us the power and authority, all right, of divine healing. We thank you for it. We give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Anasco, I recognize you and God bless you. God bless you, Pinky. God bless you as well. And uh, please share the broadcast to your friends and loved ones. We are only broadcasting today on Facebook. Only on Facebook. Again, so just in case um, others um, cannot see us on Facebook, the other platforms please let them know that uh, due to some technical reasons we are only broadcasting uh from the facebook alone today and i please i pray that it will still be a blessing to all of you okay god bless you to anasco all right yes we've been talking about uh divine healing and um the fact that you have the authority to heal you have the power to heal and this authority and this power is is given to us by christ jesus is given to us by christ jesus why because brother michael god bless you god bless you hr blessings of the lord be upon all of you and your house please let me just say this um as a reminder for those who are just coming Today, we are only broadcasting from the Facebook alone, all right, due to some technical um, issues here this morning, we are only broadcasting from the Facebook alone. So please share it to your friends and loved ones. Let them know that in, just in case they're looking for me on the YouTube or other areas like the Twitter, um, they cannot find us there. It's only on Facebook today. So please uh, help me to you know put broadcast this help me to broadcast this thing out there brother michael god bless you for the wonderful work you are doing and um showcasing the power of god out there on your platforms and your your timelines hr god bless you please all of you put this broadcast on your timelines all right and share it please do that you can start your watch parties as well let it go as far as it can go invite everybody in there put it on your timelines and invite your friends tell them it's only on the um facebook today only on the facebook because of some technical issues here so we've been talking about divine healing which you and i have been given the authority by christ jesus okay to heal and uh, the power to heal is the Holy Spirit. The power to heal or the healer. All right. We, we say Jesus is the master healer. Well, he's a master healer because of the Holy Spirit that was in him, that was operating in him. And Jesus said that we will also, and we will also, will do the same thing when the holy spirit comes upon us so in other words he did what he did heal all kinds of sicknesses and diseases because of the holy spirit all right s-a-h-a -A, saha blessings blessings opal god bless all of you i pray that the blessings of the lord will continually be upon you and your house please share the broadcast to your friends and loved ones only on on the facebook today all right, other platforms, we are not on there because of technical issues. So please invite them, tell them um, it's only on Facebook today. Please put this thing on your watch parties and um, your timelines as well. Share it. Share this good news from this ministry. Share it. All right, so we're talking about 
divine healing and um, the fact that you can also heal you can heal why because the Holy Spirit who the G whom Jesus promised us is here with us he is here with us and when you have invited him in you to be part of you he will be with you remember Jesus says when he comes he will dwell with us and he will be in us forever so therefore please be mindful and remember that the Holy Spirit is here now whether the Holy Spirit is in you or not is another thing and if you know if you know as I said yesterday if you know you don't have the Holy Spirit in you please ask Jesus said that to us as we read that yesterday if you miss any of the of the uh, this week's um, broadcast please make your way to um, the um, the YouTube all right now however you see Jesus I am talking about the followers of Jesus and the mandate of uh, divine healing the authority given to us the same authority Jesus had to heal is what we're talking about here all right daily God bless you <laughs> we're talking about the same authority that Jesus had Jesus says you will have this same power and the same authority when the Holy Spirit comes upon you beloved you know something we can go deeper into this thing here and so other areas of our lives and this is why I keep telling you that you see don't don't limit the power of the Holy Spirit even the way you think and see things okay the Holy Spirit can help you to understand things better the Holy Spirit can help you to see things better and the Holy Spirit will let you come to the place where you know you 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 don't argue with things that you have a better understanding on it you don't so allow see Jesus never argue with with nobody I've been watching I've been watching him very carefully I keep saying this the only problem Jesus had the only people Jesus had a problem with was the religious leaders Jesus never had a problem with unbelievers or sinners for that matter he came to lead them back to the father as a result of sin the separation came between us and God Jesus came to reconcile that separation and lead us back to the father I hope you understand in this you and I know that and so let us be very careful and how this understanding and to know what will give us the authority for us to heal the sick we're talking about divine healing and we see that Jesus we should see so many sicknesses and diseases that Jesus was confronted with and he healed them why because the Holy Spirit was in him he was able to do that now this is why Jesus says when the Holy Spirit comes upon you you will be able to do the same thing you will do the same thing and even more he says you will do the same thing and even more why because what gives you the the authority the power to heal is the person of the Holy Spirit now be, be beloved I keep saying this that you can go beyond just even healing to other areas of life the Holy Spirit is our helper in every dimension of our lives how to think right how to see well how to understand things the Holy Spirit will help you to do all that I hope you understand me listen I I I've been in the um, in the Christian circles for a long time but the more I keep getting closer to the Holy Spirit to teach me the more and the better I began I'm beginning to understand things and see it better and properly 
And so the reason why Jesus said he will send, he will ask the Father to send you and I another helper is because we need him to help us even understand and to see things better. If not, we will be so limited in the way we see things and the way we think. And so please, I want you to be mindful of the person of the Holy Spirit. And for you to be, be able to heal the sick. Also, know that with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can do it. So Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead you into all truth. So in other words, you will not even know the truth. This morning I was chatting with um, uh, Dale about truth. You will not even know about the truth unless the Holy Spirit leads you to it. If not, your own mindset of what you think truth is may not be what the truth is. And, and again, the only person who can help you to do, do that is the Holy Spirit. Other than that, please forget it. You cannot, you can, you, you, you will just be arguing and wasting your time. So rely on the Holy Spirit. Trust the Holy Spirit. Jesus knew better to tell you and I that the Holy Spirit is what you and I need to live this life on this earth until, listen, as long as you and I are on this earth, we will need the Holy Spirit to help us. If not, we will not be fulfilling righteousness. Jesus, we've looked at so many diseases on the face of this earth. So many diseases. So many sicknesses or illnesses. Now Jesus in his time was able to heal all these diseases. And then Jesus said to even the early church that you will do this. You can do this and even more when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. My beloved, it didn't stop right there. It has transcended into our time and our day that the Holy Spirit, you know, the reason why I keep saying this is because Jesus says when the Holy Spirit comes, he will dwell with us and be in us forever. Ever. So the Holy Spirit has not left. So it is it is your assignment to engage the Holy Spirit in every area of your life. I have made a lot of mistakes by not relying on the Holy Spirit. I've done a lot of I've taken a lot of you know steps in doing certain things without. And I re I look back today, I see if I had read. If I just listened to the Holy Spirit, if I just waited a day, I will have gotten the results that I needed. And so, beloved, I am talking to you about a very practical Christian way of life. Virginia, long time. I hope it is well with you, and I pray that it is well with you and your house. Patricia, God bless you as well. May the blessings of the Lord continue to be upon you and your house. Beloved, this is very this is very important in the life of you as a Christian. What makes you and what will help you to live this practical Christian life is the person of the Holy Spirit. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, beloved, you ain't going to be able to do it. Do you know without the Holy Spirit, you cannot even, even, even forgive? You know, you hear people say, well, I have forgiven, but I can't forget. Man, that's a lie. How do you say you forgive you? Well, you can, you can forgive, but you can't forget. In other words, I have temporarily let it go, but it's still, it's still there at the back of my mind. That in case anything around that, that triggers it, I am going to just release what I have concerning you. But the only way you can forgive and forget is by the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you this. Without the Holy Spirit, you're going to forget it. As long as you, listen, you are living on this earth as a human being. You know that this earth has more sinful activities around us and more evil things around us 
than anything else. And so for you to live this Christian life in, a, in its practical manner as Jesus did, and still be able to have that divine authority to do things, is for you to continually on daily basis rely and depend on the Holy Spirit. If not, you're not going to be able to do it. You will not. You know, We've been talking about divine healing. But I want to interject something here that is is it's a video circling around okay of a, of a police officers who actually arrested um this um um African American uh, brother and um it, it's 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 heartbreaking to see you know the, the what was going on let me ask you this let me ask you this in your in your in your i mean it's it's i, I can look at it i you know as of yesterday i said you know i don't think i can look at this again this is this is somebody who um i don't know for whatever the reason was you know, literally killing somebody, murdering somebody in a broad daylight in this 21st, 20, I mean, 21st century, broad daylight. And, um, but you wonder what, what is, what, what was going on in his mind and among the other, you know, um, officers standing there, what was going through their minds to do that? And what was their intent? Now the question is, do you think you can forgive such a person? Do you think you can forgive such a person? Christianity, beloved, is not bread and butter. I don't know how you see Jesus, what kind of category you put him. But I still remember that when all that evil was done, to him, he still hung on the cross and um, prayed for those who did him evil. A father, forgive them for they don't know what they were doing. Forgive them. Now, how do you pray such a prayer for all that was done? Beloved, let me say this. Without the Holy Spirit, you will not be able to do that. I am talking about your living a practical Christian life. You will not be able to do it. So if you want to live a, 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 a true Christian life as forgiveness is part of your Christian life, beloved, depend on the Holy Spirit. Because for you to say, I have, forg I have forgiven, but I can forget. You have not, you have not completely forgiven in my opinion. And that is my personal opinion. I am only reminding you that we have a helper. Jesus loves you and I. God loves us. That he sent us a helper. Let us rely and depend on this helper. And his name is the Holy Spirit. Don't only look for the Holy Spirit to help you to pass your exams or to do your, your, your work well, to you know, um, uh, be um, uh, a better employee and all that. Rely on him to live that practical, this your daily life, practical way of living. Because it's not, I mean, in your own capacity and ability, you will not be able to forgive such a, such a person. You will not be able to forgive. Mm -mm. And you know that is, now this is the truth. You want to know the truth? This is the truth. And the truth is you cannot, you cannot, there's no way you can, you can forgive such a person 
for this heinous crime. But to live a practical Christian life is for you to depend on the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, you know, the same Holy Spirit will help you to forgive. The same Holy Spirit will, will, who will also give you that power or the authority to heal the sick. Now you see the difference. You see that Jesus had, had it both ways. He was able to heal the sick and he was able to heal. He was able to also forgive. Jesus was able to heal the sick and he was also able to forgive. Is it right? No, it's no, no way right. No way, irrespective. It was no way right. No way. There's no way around it. It's sickening. It's heartbreaking and all that. Well, you, 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 this black pastor, you don't even know what you're talking about and all that. I've been told this. I've been told all that. Over four, over 30 years, I've been told that. Being, being a member of the police clergy, I have counseled numerous police officers. After roll calls that they come and they come into work, they come in with issues. Coming to work, they come with problems from homes. And most of the time, they don't know who to talk to. And most of the time, they don't know who they can trust or rely on. And so after roll call, yes, we have, we have a time to do a little counseling before they hop on that vehicle to go out on the street. I, I often say this, you cannot, you cannot be anything good out there than you are in your house. Whatever spirit that is bothering you in your house, you carry that thing outside there. And most of you know exactly what I'm saying too, that sometimes you are so angry, you probably fought with your wife or your husband and you are taking that thing and you take it to work and you want to just... You want to just bust out on, on somebody. Beloved, Christianity is not bread and cheese. Why you think that you can just have it, flip your legs over each other and just enjoy it? It's a practical way of life. Christianity is a practical way of life. Father, forgive them. Jesus said that. Father, forgive them for, the, for they don't know what they're doing. Well, well, that was Jesus. Well, you are a follower of Jesus, ain't you? And Jesus says, these things that you see me do, you greater works, greater works shall you do. And how are you going to do those greater works? He says, you have to wait for the Holy Spirit. You have to receive, you have to engage the Holy Spirit. He is the person who can help you to live this life, this Christian life. Beloved, it's not easy. No, no question about it. That is why I don't believe in this, you know, come and pray for me, you know, and, and, and somebody tell you, uh, you know, do this a direction and do. Beloved, listen, it goes beyond just those, those religious things. It goes beyond that. How do you coexist? with somebody who hates you. You tell me, how do you coexist? Not everybody even like what I'm saying. You see that the, the numbers going down and all that because, you know, I'm telling you this fact, beloved. If you say you are a believer or a follower of Jesus Christ, then you must have this understanding. You cannot, you cannot, we see examples like some of the the, 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 um, the followers with him early on, somebody like Peter. Like Peter. You see the difference when the, the, the Holy Spirit has not come upon Peter, what he did, and when the Holy Spirit came upon him, what he did. That you see the contrast. Without the Holy Spirit, beloved, you cannot live this Christian life. 
And you always be beating yourself as to, man, I have failed again. Man, I wanted to do this and I have failed again. Because you are relying on your own ability and with that you cannot. What makes you live this practical Christian life, beloved, is the person of the Holy Spirit, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to repeat myself with this. You cannot, listen, it doesn't bother with me whether you tune me off or not. As long as the social media platform is open, I'm going to use it to declare that which Jesus, I am a follower of Jesus. So I don't, I'm not talking about nobody and or going all over the place. I am a follower of Jesus. Now, whether you want to see Jesus as a black person or white person, that is your business. I see Jesus as Jesus. And don't come and ask me which color of him was. I don't know. And I'm not going to be sticking to that business. I don't know. All I know is that he came to die for me. He took upon himself my sins. And if you don't believe that, then that's yours as well. But if we say we are followers of him, then I want to point out to you that as a follower, he said I should emulate what he did. Beloved, I'm telling you, the, 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 what Jesus went through, uh, you, you have not even seen half of it in your life. And yet he says, you can do it. When you receive the Holy Spirit. So in other words, he was able to do all that, endure. Jesus was able to endure the shame, the despisement, the, 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 I mean, the, 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 the atrocious things that was done against him. But he says, I was able to endure all that. And this is the key. The Holy Spirit is the key. And therefore, receive the Holy Spirit. And then you'll be able to live. If not, then, beloved, you can be following me. But when the rubber meets the road in your life, you will deny me based on how you even respond to things. Because what I stood for is what I want you to stand for. Beloved, it's not easy. No, no question about that. This is why I'm stressing for you to know that that the, that what will, what gives us the enablement to do it is the person of the Holy Spirit. Now you can see my passion. I am passionate about this because I have tried it all. I've tried it all. You know, I have something that I, I used to say, you know, years ago about this. I said, listen, I was not brought to America. I came. There's a difference between me, you coming on your own, and, and you being forced. So the way I see things sometimes is probably not the way, but not to, not to justify that what is done against, you know, the, the other person or the other skin color person is right. I am talking only about being a Christian. Unless, therefore, you don't want to be it. Because you have to respond. Because you have to. Because you have to. Beloved, we are living in a, in a world that a lot of things are not fair. And a lot of things are not right. But for you and I to be followers of Jesus... And get it right. The only way we can do it is by the help of the Holy Spirit. If you don't agree with me, that's fine too. But as long as I read this word, his word, and get the understanding thereof, I know that without the Holy Spirit, I would not be able to. I would not be able to do it. You know what? I, I've been heard by so many people. Sometimes the, the closer, the, the ones who are even closer to you. And all that and all that. But 
I am still sitting here talking to you because I, I decided to depend on daily basis on the Holy Spirit to help me. I can help myself. I know that. I'm telling you. I don't, if you can help yourself, go right ahead. I can help myself. And so I need to rely on the Holy Spirit to help me. And that's my strength. That was the strength of Jesus. That was the strength of Jesus, if you want to know. That was the strength of Jesus. He demonstrated that to us. Jesus, the perfect example for the Christian life. Jesus, a perfect example for the Christian life. And so if you don't, if you don't understand that, and you think Christianity is somewhere what religi religious people are showing you or telling you, beloved, you, you're wrong. Because see, the same scripture, the same Bible, is used and twisted. Twisted. And if you don't be, you can believe, see, I always said, if you believe wrong, you're going to then live wrong. And when you, you, you live wrong, you will be acting wrong. And when you be acting wrong, beloved, you're going to end up wrong. The only person who can help you to understand this Bible, the Word of God, right, is the person of the Holy Spirit. I am talking to you about the one who will help you to understand even reading the Word of God. Liz Grace, God bless you. Hey, Joe, it is well with you and your house. Brother Michael says, we must live with the mind of Christ. We must live with the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ was showcased by the Holy Spirit. Bible said Jesus, when he was baptized by John in the river Jordan, the Holy Spirit descended upon him. After he was being baptized, it's the Holy Spirit, the Bible said the Holy Spirit led him. Henceforth, until Jesus even was crucified, he was buried and resurrected. The Bible says that the same Spirit resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead. The same Spirit. How do you not see that and say you are a follower of Christ? To have the mind and to leave the mind of, of Christ is for you to be dependent on the Holy Spirit. Listen to his voice. I know sometimes, man, we want things done and, and, and this thing here. Does that mean we don't have to do we don't have no brain of our own and all that. Listen, baby, I'm not talking about not using your brain, but I'm talking about depending, depending on, depend on the Holy Spirit so you can use your brain right. He's all knowing, y'all. The Holy Spirit is all knowing. You know, you are not all knowing. He is all knowing. He knows what's ahead of you. Jesus says he will even tell us the things to come. He will tell us the things to come. How interesting that so everybody was surprised about COVID-19. And yet the Holy Spirit through those who the, um, uh, were inspired to write this word. Wrote it down for us to know that there is going to be a pandemic. There's going to be a famine. There's going to be um, um, earthquakes. There's going to be this. There's going to be that. They, it was inspired by who? By the Holy Spirit to get all these things down. But beloved, you became and I became surprised or surprised, like somebody says. Why? Because we don't depend daily on the Holy Spirit to tell us even what is to come. So for you and I to be Christians or followers of the Christ, we must be dependent on the Holy Spirit. A lot of people have come into our lives and messed us up because we did not 
trust the Holy Spirit to tell us. And most of the time he was even telling us, man, this is not the way to go. Not everybody got to be your friend. You got to know, I mean, you be careful and all that. We get into things and into people and uh, we end up getting hurt later on. And it's like, man, I can't believe this. Well, were you depending on the Holy Spirit? So talking about divine healing, Jesus was able to heal all these diseases. The ones you know and the ones you don't know. We've been sp we've spoke of fever. We spoke of leprosy. We've spoke of um, paralysis, the paralytics. We spoke of the 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 um, uh, organic issues like the man with the withered hand. We spoke about that. Jesus healed heal all these people. Of a palsy, even blind. Yesterday we spoke about hemorrhage that has to do with blood, the blood issues. We spoke about that nervous condition. You know, people have that. We spoke about that. Jesus healed all these people. Deafness, mute, seizure. A lot of people have seizures. Jesus healed all these people. All right? Dropsy. We spoke about that. Let's look at um, this this. This Bible says crippling spirit, crippling spirit. Let's look at that quickly. All right. In the, um, uh, in Luke chapter 13, come with me to Luke chapter 13. Let's read from the 10th verse. Luke chapter 13 from the 10th verse. All right. I'll open your Bibles now. If you have your Bibles, open it to Luke the 13th chapter. Let's read it from the 10th verse now. Now, this, this writing is very small with this Bible. Um, let me get my glasses on here. This makes me see a little larger. Now, watch this. Watch this carefully. Um, okay, Luke chapter 10. So Luke chapter 13, verse 10. Now, he, Jesus, was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. I mean, that, that was some serious stuff. And that was, that was a spirit of infirmity. Okay? Verse 12. But when Jesus saw her, Jesus called her to himself and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. You are loosed from your infirmity. Jesus healed this woman. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. That, that guy was, was, was furious. Because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. And uh, the guy said to the crowd who were there. There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore... Everybody, go home. Come and be healed on, it says, therefore, come and be healed on them on the sixth day and not on the Sabbath day. Go, don't come and be healed. You can come any of those six days. But on the Sabbath day, please don't come. You cannot be healed on the Sabbath day. Can you imagine? Religious people. Religious people. As they, because they don't understand what the Sabbath is. Oh, the Sabbath day, I, I'm not picking up. I'm not talking to nobody. No phone calls. Well, let's see if you can find yourself rushing yourself to the hospital if you have an emergency with your own body. On the Sabbath day. Listen to what Jesus says on verse 15. The Lord Jesus answered him and said to the guy, Hypocrite. Hypocrite. Does not each of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his donkey from the store and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? 
What what has what has Sabbath got to do? The law was that God rested, but resting does not mean you don't have to eat. If you talk about work, you don't need to do anything. Well, don't even get up and do anything. That is not even the issue here. The main focus is that Jesus healed these kind of disease as well that Satan had put on this woman. And that is crippling spirit. Jesus healed crippling spirit. Jesus was able to do this thing because the Holy Spirit was in him. Come with me to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. There's something interesting here. Luke 22. Look at um, verse um, verse 49. Look at verse 49. Mm. Um, let's pick it up from verse 47. And while Jesus, he was speaking, behold, a multitude, a multitude, and he who was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When those around him saw what was going to happen, they said to Jesus, Lord, Shall we strike with a sword? Those who are with Jesus. They said, Lord, shall we strike with a sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus answered and said, Permit this, even this, permit even this for me to heal you. This is not the right way to go. Permit me to even heal you with this. What you are doing may not be right in the sight of these people, but that is not the way to go. So permit me to make it right. And the Bible says, and he, Jesus, touched his ear and healed him. Jesus touched the ear and healed him. Even replacing a cut of ear. Jesus was able to do that as well. The power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus went on and on and on and on. And this again, like I said earlier, the Holy Spirit has not come upon Peter. He is the one who did this at that time. Later on when he received the Holy Spirit, Peter began to see differently. He began to think differently. When people around him were mocking them in the day of Pentecost and they were speaking in tongues and they were laughing and saying, these people are drunk, these people are crazy and all that. Peter, the one who had no patience, stood up, the Bible says, this time and he spoke to them with an understanding by the Holy Spirit. That, hey, men of Galilee, these people are not drunk. No, 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 no. This was what the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Joel said. That the times are going to come that God will pour his spirit upon all flesh. Now, this is the same man who are cut off ears. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, beloved, you even think right and see right. It's not only about just shaking yourself, you know, jacking yourself like, oh, glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hey, and that kind of nonsense. Now, the Holy Spirit will help you to live a better life as a follower of Christ. Now, that is who a follower of Christ was demonstrating by the help of the Holy Spirit or by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that thousands of people gave their life to the Lord. 
How would people give them lives, their lives to the Lord if they hear you following the crowd, saying the same thing, dancing the same song, and all kind of stuff? Christianity, beloved, I'm telling you, it's not what you just what you think. So think again. Peter was able to do what he couldn't do before. And on and on, we we'll see that hence then, I mean, from then on, Peter was, was a different human being. And all the disciples, for that matter, became, I mean, they were different. The difference of you, the Christian, is the infilling and indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You cannot live this Christian life unless you don't understand what a Christian life is without the Holy Spirit. Look at, um, we're still in Luke, right? I mean, I mean, unclean spirits were, were, were cast out of people. Demons, demon possessed people were, were healed. All these things Jesus did. Jesus did all these things, and, and if you look at John the 14th chapter, come, come with me to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John the 14th chapter. Look at, um, look at verse 12. Most assuredly I said to you, this is Jesus talking, I said this to you, he who believes in me, in me, Jesus. Not looking at my skin color, whatever it may be, whoever has shown you that. But in me as Jesus, not what you see on the outside. You see, your true self is the spirit that is living in you. That's why Bible tells you and I to test all spirits. And I've told you this on this platform time and again, test my spirit. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is for you to have the Holy Spirit in you, for the Holy Spirit to show you whether I have him in me or there's another spirit. Jesus says, look at verse 12 of John, the 14th chapter. Jesus says, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also and greater works underline this great the, the, this thing greater works than these he will do because i go to the father below below it i go to the father but watch this now i go to the father and whatever you ask in my name i will do it that the father may glorify in the son if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandment, Jesus says. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. So for you to talk about truth without the Holy Spirit, you will not be seeing or hearing or talking the truth. That's what I meant by earlier when I said, what is the truth? Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world, watch this now, verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Because the world neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The spirit of truth. The world don't know him. So for you to join the world and sing in the same chorus of the world, well, obviously you don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. How is it that everybody saying the same, saying the same thing by you saying something different? Because of what you see and what you know and what is in you. Beloved, that is why I keep telling you, just because, you know, he or she has a lot of following, doesn't mean you need to know that person by the spirit. They were telling Jesus he was full of a demon. <laughs> you know, he said, 
How can a demon fight against another demon? How? And Jesus says, I will send the help, I will ask the Father to send a helper. Look at verse 26 of chapter 14. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you into your remembrance all things that I have said to you. The Holy Spirit will do that. But without you having the Holy Spirit engaging him in your life, how can he talk to you? How can he tell you the truth? How can he let you know the exact truth and things and not things that that looks like the truth? Do you know a lot of things look like the truth, but it's not? Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot rightly divide this word of truth. You cannot rightly divide it. You can read it and you will religion will let you there's a spirit called religion you need to understand that there's a spirit it's an antichrist spirit called religion that will make you think that this is what it is but it's not there's a fine line between Christianity and religion there's a fine line between Christianity and religion write it down there's a fine line between very fine line between Christianity and religion Jesus says when the Holy Spirit comes he will teach you he will guide you he will lead you he will help you he's our helper he's our advocate he's our paraclete he's our defense he's our strength he's our healer he helps you and so when we talk about divine healing when he comes jesus says greater works than these things you see me do you will do that also you will do that you will do that also jesus says he said certain signs and and it says jesus said certain signs will follow those who believe Signs will follow those who believe in him. And he says, among those, quote, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Come with me to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Let's look at Mark chapter 16. Is my time up yet? All right, we got to finish this. Mark chapter 16. Look at Mark chapter 16, verse 18. Mark chapter 16 verse 18 let me let me let me take this one take it from verse 15 all right from verse 15 Jesus said to them go into all the world Jesus was talking to the followers and you and I are his followers now if you ascribe to it that therefore me I am a follower of Jesus Christ it is my prayer that you listening and watching me, you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the disciples or the followers, he says, go into all, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. In other words, not everybody's going to believe you. You don't don't be offended by that. I don't get offense by you telling me what you think it is because the Holy Spirit teaches me to understand the word of God better. So I don't get offense and I am in no way or wasting my time position to argue with you. The gospel is not for argument. I only pray that the Holy Spirit will also help you to see and to understand the Word of God. You, do you know why without the Holy Spirit you cannot understand and even know the Word of God? Put your, put your finger here. I, I want to prove it to you. I'm not just saying things out of my mind. Stay, stay in Mark chapter 16. I'm going to end here. But I want to just thank you Holy Spirit. I want to bring something for you to see it. 
Come with me to 1 Corinthians. Let me show you something here. 1 Corinthians. Stay in verse 16. I mean, uh, chapter 16 of Mark. But come with me to 1 Corinthians. Let me show you something. All right? 1 Corinthians, I want to show you something. For you to know that, beloved, without the Holy Spirit, you ain't even going to know and understand the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Look, let's read from verse 6. I usually start from verse 6 here, but I want you to read all. Make, make time and read all. I want to show you something for you to know that without the Holy Spirit, you will not even understand. You, you will not be able to, you know, rightly divide this word of truth. And therefore, you cannot even understand it for you to rightly divide it. Look at verse 6. Verse, um, verse 6. However, we speak a wisdom among those who are mature. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Yet not the wisdom of this world. The wisdom of this world. Not the wisdom. We're not talking about wisdom. The world has its own way of, of thinking. But we, by the divine power of the Holy Spirit, think. Because the way we see it is the way we think. Differently. Not the wisdom of this age. Nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Get that revelation here. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Okay? Not for our shame or disgrace or embarrassment, but for our glory. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for they had known, they would not have even crucified the Lord of glory. If they had known, they would not have even done that. But it is written, all right? I have not seen or ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for those who love him. No eyes have seen or ear heard. Things which God has prepared for those who love him. Now watch this revelation here. Look at verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. God has revealed this hidden wisdom to us through his spirit. For the, for the spirit searches all things. Yes. Yes. Even the deep things of God. So for you to come to know even the things of God, to understand the things of God without the Holy Spirit, sweetheart, you ain't going to know it. And I don't care how long you say you've been, you've been hanging around in this Christian circles. You ain't going to know it. It's the, it's the Spirit that searches the things of God. Watch this. Verse 11. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? That's why you... You, 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 you know, without the Holy Spirit, you, you see things in your own way. Okay? For what man knows the things of a man, except the spirit of man that which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God, except the spirit of God. Even so, no one knows the things of God, except the spirit of God. Even so, no one knows. So for you to come to know, you have to rely on the Holy Spirit for him to reveal to you, to give you the right percept, you know, precepts and, 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 and the, 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 the right meaning of what God is saying. If not, you ain't going to know. So now, let me close with this. In uh, Mark chapter 16, Jesus says to ask the followers, go into all, verse 15, Mark 16, 15, go into all the... the um, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Straight up. And these signs will follow those who believe. Watch this now. In my name, they will cast out demons. In my name, those who believe. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Watch this now. I'm going to bring it to a close. They will lay hands on the sick, and the sick will be healed, or the sick will recover. You will lay hands on the sick. So you see, Jesus did it, and you and I can do it too. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me we can do it. This is the evidence of the fact that we can do it. The thing is, you haven't tried. One, maybe you don't know you, you, I mean, you have not received the Holy Spirit. And how do you receive the Holy Spirit? Acts. Receive Jesus. 
That's the spirit of Christ. Receive him and his spirit. It's a package. Some time ago, I said this thing before, a young man after one of this broadcast series of the Holy Spirit came to me and said, I want the Holy Spirit. I said, have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? He says, no, I'm a Muslim. I can't do that. I said, well, then you ain't going to have it. Is that a hard truth? Maybe. But that's a fact. You want, you want, you you don't want you you don't want the 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 the, the one who has showcased and I mean you, you want the representative of the original. That's what religion does. Religion don't give you the original stuff, it gives you imitation. Therefore, you the believer, the follower of Christ, receive the Holy Spirit if you have not. I also know by the word of God that there are some believers who have not received the Holy Spirit as we, we saw Paul at meeting with some believers and asked them, since you, are, since you believe, have you received the Holy Spirit? They said no. They said no. He says, then into whose baptism have you been baptized to believe? He said, John. He said, well, John came to baptize it with water for the repentance of your sins. But Jesus is come. And John said that, that Jesus, when Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. They said, well, we have not received, we, we don't even know anything about the Holy Spirit. Maybe you are such person, you are a believer of Jesus Christ. You believe him, you follow him, but you... You, you, you probably haven't as so much heard who the Holy Spirit is. Beloved, that was the Spirit of Christ Jesus. And He has sent Him, that Spirit, to us. And we need to embrace Him and be able to live this Christian life. Without that, you will not. You'll be struggling to live it, beloved, and you cannot. We see the evidence and the practicality of the, of the Holy Spirit operating in Jesus. And that's what Jesus says, I will ask the Father to send him the Holy Spirit to you. And when he comes, he will help you and guide you, lead you into all areas of your life. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you are a believer or a follower of Jesus Christ, then ask. Jesus says, you ask and you will receive it. Acts. Acts. Of course, I mean, if if somebody else who is filled with the Holy Spirit also, you know, lay his hands on you, praise the Lord. But until then, don't sit down there and be waiting for somebody. To, like in the day of uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, those believers in Samaria, they have to send Peter to come. Well, if you send me to come, I'll come. If that's what you want, I will come and lay my hands on you. To receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But you can ask. The prior, before that, you make sure you have received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. If you are listening to me for the first time, maybe, or even the second time, or the third, or how many times, but you have not received Jesus into your heart, and believe him in your heart and then confess him with your mouth that God raised him from the dead. But you religiously receive him just because, you know, some people were doing it and said, well, you have to also receive him. Like in the days of, of some of us, when they were, they said we should receive the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they were beating us left and right center, giving us uppercuts and all that to open our mouth and speak, which was not. <laughs> So maybe that's what you have done also to receive, to say you are a believer. But no, beloved, come with me. You know, you can write this thing down and check it. All right. Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Look at verse 9. It says, if you confess your, with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes. You believe with your heart to righteousness. And with your mouth, confession is made to salvation. 
So you've got to confess to receive your salvation. Believe Jesus in your heart. Be believe him. Have him. I mean, believe him that he is your savior in your heart. John 3, 36, write it down and go and check it. If anyone believes and trusts in him, a savior will have everlasting life. If you do not believe and trust in him as Savior, you will not see everlasting, high, everlasting life. But the wrath or the anger of God will continually be hanging on your head. That's the word. So receive him right by believing him right in your heart as your Lord and your Savior. Beloved, it position you for you to, to receive his spirit. And your thinking and the way you see will change. You will also have the authority and the power to heal the sick. You see, when the Holy Spirit came now upon the disciple, like somebody like Peter, when it when when a sorcerer by the name of Simon in Samaria, where Peter was sent to go and pray for those who have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This sorcerer, this magician saw that act and it's like, can I give you money to also receive this so that who, whoever, whomever I lay my hands on will also receive the Holy Spirit. Peter says, let your money perish with you. Beloved, Christianity is not about money. We've got this thing all wrong, twisted. Christianity is not about just making money. It's not just about making money. I'm not saying don't go and make money. I want money to take care of some ministry things and, and get Bibles and send it, you know, to put the word of God into their hands. So that's why I ask you to, to just co-join me. Let's do it together. But money is not. Money is not the first thing that should come to your mind as a believer or living or becoming a Christian so you can be rich. You got it all wrong. Religion is what teaches you that. Receive Jesus right. Make him your Lord and your Savior. The Bible says that if you believe him in your heart and you confess him with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from your sins. Your salvation day has come, therefore. Your salvation has come. If you are that person, I want to pray with you. Be believe in him in your heart. How do I do it? Like the same way you believe things. Believe him in your heart. Exercise your faith. You will also be able to heal. And if you are a Christian or you are a believer, a follower of Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. Beloved, it's time for you to begin to exercise your authority. Showcase who you are. Heal the sick. Jesus says we can do this. He says we can do this. I'll come your way again with this. We can do it. It's not only for those who are with Jesus there, there, there alone. No, this is for all of us followers of Jesus Christ. The, that the Holy Spirit is still here with us. He's still enabling us to do things that we cannot do in our own abilities, including loving people and forgiving people who have hurt you so bad. Again, what, what we are seeing is not, it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. There's an enemy out there who, who overshadows people to do things. You overshadow people to do things. And after he has accomplished his purpose, he leaves. And sometimes you see people crying. It's like, I can't believe I did this. Why? What came over me to do that? I'm wondering, I'm really wondering what is going through their minds. Probably now. Because he uses you to do evil. And after that he leaves. Receive Jesus. Make him your Lord and your Savior. And receive his baptism. If you're that person, I want to pray with you right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you in my heart. That you are the Christ. I am a sinner. And you came to die for my sins. You took upon 
yourself my sins. You were sentenced for not doing anything wrong, but standing in for me. You were nailed to the cross. You were crucified. You were buried. And God raised you from the dead. I believe you in my heart as my Savior. You saved me. Today I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart and into my life. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. And Jesus, baptize me with your spirit that I may see the way I'm supposed to see. That I may think the way I'm supposed to think. And that I may hear your voice and the direction of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me this day. Amen and amen. Beloved, this is very powerful, very, very powerful step you have taken today. It's not a joke. Christianity is a practical way of life, and it's not a joke. Today, you've taken the step of faith with all seriousness. The next thing that I want to suggest to you and encourage you to do is to get the Word of God, the Bible. Is a word inspired, the Holy Spirit inspired to be written for you and I to hear what God is saying to us. Get your copy. Whichever language or dialect you can read and understand, get it. Now, I may not be able to put, post, put on the screen for you the other information as to teaming up with me to get this word of God or Bibles in the hands of people. Remember, Jesus says to we the followers, go into all the nations of the world, preach the gospel. And so this is why we do. I don't know about you, but you need to start. And if you cannot go, like some of us can go, maybe because of your work or whatever you do, or you don't have the, the necessary means or even know what to do. Team up. Let's team up. Let's team up and do it together. All right? Let's do it together. And therefore, I ask you to, you know, send a financial seed or, or not a seed, but a donation. Or you buy the Bibles. See, that's, that's my thing. You buy the Bibles and send them so that we can send it to the world. If not, then send your best donation or gift for us to buy it. We don't print them. We have to buy and ship them across. So let me hear from you today. You can go to the website of this ministry. The address is www.patrickquainoministries.com. You will see the button that says donate. Click on it and follow the rest of the instructions. And send your best donation. You want to use what money, gram, or uh, some people says, "Well, Pastor, I don't know how to do those things." You can, but I can use money, gram, or Western Union. Just put my name, Patrick Quino. Hmm? Yeah, it will go to the use, and I will let you know. So, beloved, let's do this. Let's do this. So, if you have just received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, make sure you get your Bible. If you do not have one, though. And cannot afford or find one please let us know all right write to me by through email the address is icfm29 at gmail.com icfm2929 at gmail.com or you can go to the website the information is there for you to contact us or you can also call if you want to just call and reach us our office here the address the phone number is um, um 9914 yeah 914 2462421 9142462421 i want to hear from you 
if this ministry has been a blessing to you, help you in any way, shape, or form for you to increase your understanding in the Word of God. I want to hear it. It encourages me and this ministry for us to know that we are on the right path. Please don't try to engage me into any any politics. It's 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 not what Jesus didn't come to play politics. Small father Wenda, the the people around him, you know, were trying to bring some politics to him as to uh, would you you know take the the, the 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 kingdom from the Romans and give it to us and all this? He says no 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 don't don't even don't even go there. Don't even go there. So please don't bring it. I'm not going to engage you in politics. I'm I'm a servant of the Lord showcasing the gospel. That is what Jesus says I should do. Did you see that? He says, go into all the nations and preach the gospel. The gospel of salvation. Beloved, that is what we ought to do. Is a gospel of salvation. When men understand right, they will live right and think right. So therefore, I pray that all is well with you. This broadcast today has been a blessing to you. I thank you for spending time with me. We've gone a little over and beyond our time. But I pray that God's grace will see you through this life race with, with extra pace that no enemy can chase. Until then, as always, just want to let you know, you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. Have an epic day wherever you are. It is well.